Hello everyone and welcome back to the Fluctus channel. With all the hype about hypersonic weapons, we wanted to look at the X-51 Wave Rider, a scramjet experimental unmanned aerial vehicle or UAV. Developed to be carried by the F-35, or inside a B-52 Bombay, this is what a hypersonic aerial vehicle looks like and can achieve. Hypersonic weapons, which can travel at speeds exceeding Mach 5, are changing warfare by blurring the distinction between strategic and tactical strikes. Their maneuverability and near-instantaneous arrival render standard defenses ineffective, making response nearly impossible. The X-51 Wave Rider is an unmanned scramjet demonstration aircraft built in collaboration with the DARPA, the U.S. Air Force, NASA, and Boeing. When attached to a B-52, pre-flight checks begin with standard examinations of the airframe and fuel systems. The scramjet propulsion system, particularly its hydrocarbon fuel source and ignition mechanism, receives special attention because its operation in hypersonic condition is important. The flight trajectory system and communication cables are investigated, and the X-51's attachment to the pylon is confirmed. Finally, the B-52's internal systems are scrutinized to ensure it can carry and release the X-51 at the requisite altitude and airspeed. When all systems are normal, a takeoff is authorized. The operation of a B-52 Stratofortress launching an X-51 Wave Rider is a precise procedure. The sheer force of eight Pratt & Whitney turbojet engines, each delivering 17,000 pounds of thrust, enables the massive aircraft to lumber down the runway. The B-52 takes off and accelerates through 180 knots towards its optimum launch speed. Once in the air, the crew efficiently coordinates to gain altitude while maintaining precise airspeed. The B-52 flies to the correct tactical altitude and aligns with the chosen release point, ready to deploy the X-51 Wave Rider. After a countdown, the X-51 is released over the Pacific after being transported to roughly 50,000 feet. During the initial flying phase, an MG-140 ATACMS solid rocket boosters propels the Wave Rider to speeds up to Mach 4.3, or 3,000 miles per hour. Good release. Stay away. The ATACMS rocket is ejected when the Wave Rider enters its mid flight phase, and the Pratt and Whitney Rocketdyne SJY 61 scramjet engine takes over. A scramjet is essentially a jet engine with no moving parts. It consumes air at supersonic speeds whereas a conventional jet engine slows the air down, mixes it with fuel, and burns it all instantly. This causes thousands of small explosions, propelling the craft forward. The 
because of the experimental nature of the technology, these launches do not always go to plan. The third X-51 Wave Rider suffered a serious setback during a test in August 2012. From scramjets to a completely different kind of weapon, but just as exotic. ATREUS 2022, a joint exercise involving the Polish Air Force, United States Air Forces, and Europe Air Force Africa, and SOCEUR, or U.S. Special Operations Command Europe, took place at Powitz, Poland on November 8, 2022. The mission used a Polish Air Force C-130 Hercules and focused on training to load palletized precise effects cargo. It was a natural progression from earlier partnerships with SOCEUR, palletized precision effects capability, which has been in the arsenals of European NATO allies and partners since 2011, has been continuously developed with the help of U.S. experts. The palletized missiles concept emphasizes the weapon deployment efficiency and efficacy. Mounting launch-ready missiles or other armaments onto standard-sized pallets simplifies the loading and shipping procedure. The Rapid Dragon system is a great example of this. These are palletized Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile, or JASSM, systems that can be quickly loaded into various air vehicles. The arrangement allows for fast deployment, transforming traditional cargo planes into capable strike vehicles. The best way to think of it is a launch platform suspended from parachutes. It not only improves mission readiness, but also operational flexibility, allowing forces to respond quickly to developing threats and turns transport aircraft into strategic offensive threats. A unique piece of equipment known as a K-loader is used to load the Rapid Dragon system onto a C-130 Hercules. The missile-loaded pallets are brought up to the exact height of the C-130's cargo bay door by the K-loader, which is effectively a movable platform lift for cargo. The C-130 Hercules has a roller conveyor system on the floor that allows for quick and easy movements of pallets once inside. The pallets glide easily to their respective positions throughout the airplane once they're on the rollers. A system composed of four Rapid Dragon palletized missiles typically weighs roughly 8,000 pounds, allowing for manageable loading without jeopardizing the aircraft's payload carrying capabilities. Rapid Dragon represents a significant breakthrough in the U.S. Air Force's strategic capability. This palletized, long-range weapon system is made up of joint air-to-surface standoff missiles installed on pallets named boxes. The use of this method enables the missiles to be deployed quickly and efficiently from airplanes, such as the C-130 Hercules and C-17. They parachute down and deploy the missiles using an automated mechanism without requiring airplane modifications.
This is not the first time the military has attempted to utilize transport aircraft in an offensive role. Converting cargo planes into arsenal planes has been a major focus of military modernization. Project Spartan envisioned the C-27J as a modular gunship outfitted with the precise strike package. Boeing's Cargo Air Launch System, or CALS, envisions launching missiles from pallets inside a C-17 or C-130J. Meanwhile, a part of the Maneuver Short Range Air Defense Program, U.S. Dynetics transformed a C-130 into a tactical drone launching platform. It would be interesting to see what they come up with next. Other avenues are also examined. In the U.S. Air Force, they are also looking for more ways to extend the usefulness of the B-1B Lancer. Originally developed to carry external weapons, the ability was later removed, but tests have been launched using the targeting pod pylon and JAASMs. As the B-1B reaches the end of its service life, many argue this change may be too late. But tests have proven external weapons on the Lancer are indeed viable. With this capability, the B-1B will add a 50% increase to its payload capacity, which is already the heaviest in the U.S. Air Force. Another venture worth noting is the use of the E-6B Mercury, originally a command and control post as a ballistic missile weapons launch and control platform. The Boeing 707 aircraft was used to develop the E-6B Mercury, a strategic airborne command post and communications relay platform. Its primary objective, as deployed by the U.S. Navy, is to provide survivable, dependable, and long-lasting airborne command, control, and communications between the National Command Authority, or NCA, and U.S. strategic forces. The E-6B, with its enhanced avionics and ADAP, or Airborne Launch Control System, can execute emergency war orders and serve as the looking glass aircraft in a nuclear scenario, maintaining command functioning. On April 18, 2023, the U.S. Navy carried out a significant operation employing the E-6B Mercury, one of the primary cogs in the U.S. military's nuclear deterrence policy. The 625th Strategic Operations Squadron conducted an unprecedented airborne launch control systems test. They wanted to verify the performance reliability of the Airborne Launch Control System, or ALCS, under simulated war conditions by simulating the worst-case scenarios of a land-based launch control demise. The ALCS allows the E-6B Mercury to remotely launch intercontinental ballistic missiles, or ICBMs, from their silos, bolstering the U.S. strategic deterrence. This backup control system, which is activated if traditional ground-based systems fail during a crisis, reinforces the United States' resolve to preserve a retaliatory second strike capability, which underpins nuclear deterrence principles. Though no real launch instructions were issued during the test, it thoroughly examined the Mercury's crucial position as a mobile command center in the National Command Authority's chain. Its capability enhances the U.S. nuclear triad strategy and ensures credible deterrence from nuclear war. Hypersonic weapons may transform combat with unparalleled speed and maneuverability, blurring the distinction between strategic and tactical strikes. Rapid Dragon JASSMs, for example, allow rapid deployment and launch flexibility, transforming cargo planes into adaptable strike platforms. The military's increased emphasis on transforming transport aircraft into offensive platforms, prolonged the lifespan of current platforms, and conducting tests 
like the ALCS test of the E6B, demonstrates the continued development and potential of these technologies to impact future battles dramatically. Military techniques and technologies must be constantly adapted and innovated to traverse this changing world. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.